this is a short demo of a feature called re DML redirection which is possible with Active Data Guard since 19C. Ad Active Data Guard has been available since 11G I believe which allows you to open a standby database in read only mode and also do redo apply from the primary so you always get the current data even in the standby. It requires the Active Data Guard license but 19C introduced the ability to do DML from the standby instance itself. Oracle recommends that you do very short small DML sessions that is just a few rows not very many rows not very many sessions. So I'm just going to connect to the primary first. Okay, so these are the rows I've got at the primary. I'm going to restart the standby in read-only mode first. Okay, so I just start up, start up the standby and mount and then I will open it in read only mode. So I've already demonstrated the standby in read only mode with active data guard in the previous video. This is a standard facility you, which you could always do in earlier releases also open the standby and read only mode but at this stage redo apply has been stopped. Now I'm starting redo apply also in the standby and this is what means I need the active data guard license. I have the standby open and I also applying redo. So the standby will always read the latest data from the primary. Let me just insert into the primary uh, a new row. and I commit that insert. So I connect to the standby. I'm just confirming that I am on a standby host. So I'm on a different machine. So now I query at the standby and I can see that row with transaction ID 100 that was inserted. If I were to try to insert into the table from the standby, I get an error message saying my database is only read only at the standby side. So the way I enable DML redaction is with a parameter which in at the session level is an enable command. So it's obvious that the redirect DML is part of active data guard. Active data guard redirect DML. You can do this at the uh, instance level also. 
but it's preferable that you had, do it at s targeted sessions only so they don't allow too many sessions to do DML now let me just insert this row here okay so what happens is internally it creates a database link pointing back to the primary and executes this DML statement this insert statement actually at the primary now if I were to query the primary I won't see it until I issue a commit okay so once I issue a commit I can see the row that I created from the standby site okay so I can verify the same row I understand by now what if I were to try and insert and query from the standby okay if I were to query from the standby I see that row because it is in my session but any other session will not see that row because it is not yet committed so once I issue a commit here at the standby then the primary and the standby both will the primary will also see that row and any other session in the primary will see that row now another aspect of DML is DML behavior is the same even if you shift from the standby which means locking also happens so if I were to say I don't see that row here right as a standby because I'm not committed to the primary but what if I were to try to delete it see there's no row to be deleted because it's still not visible here now let me commit and then query here but let's try the other side let's do it insert from the standby and not commit at the primary uh, uh, not commit and then try to do delete from the primary okay so it's not visible at the primary although it's visible at the standby can I issue a delete for it at the primary obviously not because that row not being committed is still not visible So this is how you could do DML from the standby and make it visible at the primary after issue a commit.
okay this there's another feature which i need to demonstrate although the row is not visible i need to define a primary key here Okay, so now primary TXN ID is a primary key. So let's see what happens after I insert. Okay, and I let me try to insert the same value here at the standby. Now the standby insert waits because there is a primary key constraint on the transaction ID. That means I, it cannot do it cannot do the insert at all because it's waiting for the lock for that uh, transaction ID 600. If I were to commit here at the primary, I get a unique constraint while it is. So this is standard transaction behavior. If you have a unique constraint, you cannot do the same unique value from two sessions even if the second session is from the standby database similarly if I were to do an insert okay, and then because it's not visible yet so let me just roll back this and let me do the insert from the standby I have not committed the standby can I do a delete let me just query this at the standby okay so 700 traditionally 700 has been inserted from the standby and I try to delete it at the primary so this did not propagate to the primary so this is a bit of a strange behavior here this and now it sees that row and it deletes that row so this is a bit strange here I insert a row from the primary as a unique constraint I cannot insert the row from the standby for the same unique constraint right but if I've inserted I cannot delete that row because it has not been committed let me try to do, do an insert for 800 now here and I try to insert the same primary same primary key value at this primary primary site so this is also correct if you have a unique constraint you cannot e insert the same value from both sides whether the first insert was from the primary which I have demonstrated the earlier value record or whether the first insert is from the standby which I have demonstrated just now either way the behavior is consistent a unique constraint does not allow the same value to be inserted from two sessions even if one of the sessions is on the standby and the other session is in the primary so if I were to roll back for example here then this insert goes through so transaction behavior is consistent if you insert and the other session and you don't commit the other session cannot see it for a delete if you insert and don't commit the other session cannot insert the same row if you have a unique constraint violation the only catch is Oracle recommends that 
DML redirection be used for small transactions for a small no few number of sessions. And one thing you may have noticed in the error message is this one. Oracle automatically cre creates an internal database link pointing from the standby to the primary. This is not managed by you. The only re requirement is your standby and your primary have different service names for the CDB. Okay. The SIDs can be SID names can be the same. The service names have to be different for the CDB root. So let me just show you for example this is the primary 21C and this is the standby SID for both of them the SID is the same but the service names are different and of course for the pluggable database the service name remains the same so the transaction that is from the PD that is executed in the pre PDB actually goes via the CDB route because redo management is via the route okay. so your local service names for the PDBs may be the same but the service names for the two routes CDB routes should be different either the service name should be different or the SID should be different if you have the SID is different and it's straightforward if you have the same SID in both primary and standby, ensure that your service names are different. Then only this internal database link will work. Okay. 